construction has stopped, my hair is what it is, it's time to film. So, hello and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit and today, it seems Gabby Hanna is entering her Christian villain era. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Gabby and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below along with sources and resources. And now, on to the reason we're all here. Gabby Hanna is a YouTuber and she's been one for so long that I'm pretty sure everyone is at least vaguely aware of her at this point. In fact, longtime subscribers might remember, or might even be here because of, my 2021 video, Jimmy Snow, Rachel Oates, and Gabby Hanna, This Is Not A Good Look. That was my most popular video for some time and even now is my second most popular. And, well, a while back someone noted I promised an update on the Jimmy situation and never gave one because there isn't one to give. I honestly thought he would see his channel wasn't doing well following his apology and he would give another or he would at least say something, but instead he chose to mostly abandon his channel to focus on his atheist Colin show. Gabby, however, well, I won't go into specifics, we would be here all day, but she's offended, upset, bothered, and hurt a lot of people, and recently she decided to post a long overdue apology. And I just, she can't be serious. But she is serious and that's why we're here. I had some thoughts on Gabby's apology and well, let's talk about it. Before we start, I do want to recommend checking out Rachel's video, Gabby Hanna's Apology Is Not Enough, which covers her history with Gabby and her thoughts on the video. And for a more thorough overview of Gabby's egregious behavior over the years, though unfortunately this video is three years old, I recommend Cruel World Happy Minds, How Gabby Hanna Destroyed Her Career. Gabby opens her video by noting that it's September 10th, 2024, and exactly 10 years ago, she posted her first YouTube video. And it was this milestone that has made her reflect. And as she's reflected on her career, she feels like she owes a lot of people apologies. That's fair, she does, and if this video had gone differently, I would say good on her for realizing that and for being brave enough to do it. Apologizing is never easy, even when it's painfully obvious you were in the wrong. But this is Gabby Hanna, and so instead of personal, meaningful apologies, we get this. Okay, so the first bunch of people that I'd like to say thank you and I'm sorry to is anyone I've ever worked with from collaborators, producers, uh, management, agents, anyone from PA on set to director, special, I'm sorry, goes out to MTV and YouTube and YouTube Originals because I um, was difficult to work with. I took a lot of opportunities that I didn't deserve and also had no business doing. <laughs> there were a lot of people who kind of, you know, practiced and trained and wanted some of those opportunities their whole lives. And I was able to do them with really little to no actual effort in that space. So also sorry to anybody who deserved the opportunity more than me that I took from them based on like social media followers, etc., etc. This apology covers a wide breadth of people. Okay. I'm a believer in, if the problem was public, the apology should be public. But maybe some people are no longer living a public life, maybe they don't want a public apology, but I have a hard time believing that everyone that Gabby Hanna believes deserves an apology from her is okay with a blanket apology with no meaning behind it. At least, I don't hear any sincerity from her. And though I do consider myself biased, I also think that if she were sincere, it would come across in this video. Instead, it's like she's doing AA and when she got to the ninth step, decided this would suffice instead of actually doing the work to understand how she hurt people and actually putting herself in a position to be forgiven or not. Because the truth is, just because you apologize, that doesn't mean you're going to be forgiven. But if she's doing it this way, well, she'll never know how the apology is received, if she's forgiven or not. She put it out there, they can accept it or not, but she said it and now she can put it behind her and continue on. And I think it's that which reeks of insincerity to me. Literally reading my notes, I was selfish, only cared about how I could benefit. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm sorry, I got my lick back. <laughs> Maybe I'm being too harsh, but she had to write a note to tell herself she was selfish? 
And what's with the laughter? I suppose she's nervous, but honestly, I don't see why. She's not really saying anything. I'm sorry if I worked with you and I didn't behave well, you didn't deserve that and I was selfish. It's just empty. Also, what does I got my lick back mean? Google is telling me it's slang for revenge, but that seems weird in this context. Um, I also want to say thank you and I'm sorry to all of my friends past, present, who I just, uh, I dumped so much negativity on. I was such a dark cloud and was constantly just in something that I just, I know what it's like to be around somebody who's always like in some type of like negative headspace. So thank you to anybody who's been there for me in those times. And I'm sorry for anybody who was affected or brought down by my just complaining, my complaining. And also in that vein gossip, I want to say sorry to anybody who, whether I've spoken out of turn, behind your back, shared information that wasn't mine to share, I'm sorry. Again, I got my lick back and this was a big, big lesson for me in general um, about, yeah, speaking about somebody when they're not in the room in, in a negative way or in a way that uh, is overstepping personal boundaries. So that's a big one for me. I feel like I owe that apology to a lot of people from literally my whole life. I understand that you can't apologize to everyone, but it's really interesting how Gabby never mentions reaching out to someone privately. Not even naming names, just mentioning that she's reached out to friends, former colleagues, hard conversations she's had, how someone hasn't forgiven her and she's had to come to terms with it. I honestly think this is her apology. She's not reaching out privately, this is it. If you see it, great. If you don't, oh well. Your reaction to it, she's not invested in. Again, this just screams insincerity. And that's how this video goes with Gabby making blanket apologies to whole groups of people. And when apologizing to people she mentioned in her storytime videos, she says she got her lick back again. So I think she means people did to her as she did to them. And that's how she came to understand it was wrong. Or it was Jesus, hard to tell because, oh yes, Gabby Hanna is now a Christian. Uh, God humbled me and taught me empathy in that area. As I understand it, this conversion to Christianity is fairly recent. So Gabby is telling us that she didn't know or understand empathy until her 30s. Well, that certainly explains her behavior. And on that note, Gabby also apologizes to her fans for a whole bunch of reasons. And honestly, this is the only blanket apology that should be in the video. But this stood out to me. Right now I'm deleting so much content. I'm deleting a lot of my music. So I know I'll probably get some questions about, you know, where's the song, where's the song? Uh, where are these music videos? I took a lot of it down. It was either because of profanity, subject matter, or just like immodesty. Like I'm embarrassed watching a lot of those videos. Um, I grew a lot. I wish I would have taken more advice when I was coming up in the in the field. Like, I remember one of my first writing sessions, somebody said to me, like, you can, av you can avoid swearing if you can help it. And I was like, no, I want to swear. I'm so edgy and ignoring even like people telling me that I should like cover up more and stuff. Like, I wish I would have because now here I am 33 years old, um, embarrassed and having to delete a lot of work and effort that I, you know, put into a project. But no regrets. I learned a lot. I learned a lot and everything is just tuition at God University, time spent at God University, lessons learned. So is she embarrassed because she's grown or is she embarrassed because God University told her profanity and immodesty are bad things and she should be ashamed of having indulged in them. The former can be a sign of growth and maturity. I think most of us cringe at our younger selves, but the latter is... Well, I think we all know how I feel about the strictures certain Christians try to put on people. And honestly, I think with Gabby, it's not a sign of growth and change. It's a sign of which church she began attending. I have this sort of constant battle, like literally always of like, can I disappear into nothing and just like exist, you know, <laughs> in the woods? And knowing that I've been given a great responsibility that I already fumbled and misused and needing to use that responsibility uh, more wisely. Gabby did have a great responsibility. Anyone with a, I was going to say large, but really anyone with a platform does. And she did misuse it. And the fact that she thinks retiring from public life isn't an option, that people need her to be posting on YouTube, she hasn't changed. I'm not sure how to say this, but there are some comfort channels that people would miss if they stopped posting. 
There are some educational channels that do some good and neither Gabby nor her content fall into either of those categories. Hannah Needs to Yell also did a video on Gabby's apology and she makes the observation that Gabby likely feels the need to use her platform for the Great Commission, which is not great in general. And I have some questions about her beliefs, as does Hannah. I highly recommend checking out her channel, but Gabby does at least admit. Yeah, I've been like a really, I've been a really poor example and I've been really ungrateful to you. I also want to say a special I'm sorry to any of my patrons on Patreon. Um, just so inconsistent. Like, yeah, I, I got to do better. I know I've been saying that for so long, which is the problem. Like, it's, I'm trying so hard. I really am. And I know apologies have to come with action. I really am trying. She has been a bad example, though I would be willing to bet we mostly disagree as to how, but I'm glad she understands that apologies have to include action. Of course, she doesn't exactly specify what she's apologizing for and who she's apologizing to, so I'm not really sure what sort of action we're supposed to be looking for. Consistency on her Patreon, modest clothing, and no swearing in her music videos? No more talking about people behind their back? Well, the thing with me with that was just like the first two or three years it was out, like everybody was just like really digging it and it was mm. fine. But then it just kind of became trendy to use my name. And then like one girl went viral yeah. who like to the actual critiques don't bother me that much because like it's going to sound so bitchy, but whatever, like okay. you have to be careful who you take your opinion from. Mm -hmm. Like you can say like, you don't like my book or you can like critique my literary style or whatever it is. But like, I don't think you're interesting or intelligent or creative or artistic. So why the hell would I take your opinion? You're a loser. <laughs> Sorry, like your opinion's nothing to me. That was all of five months ago. So perhaps that was before she realized speaking of people in such a way is wrong. Gabby does say she needs help and has impaired executive functioning and there's nothing wrong with needing help or admitting it, but there's a difference, at least in my opinion, between having impaired executive functioning and being needlessly, pointlessly, publicly cruel. And speaking of which, here is why I don't think Gabby Hanna has changed. After telling us she used to be a machine and her content was meaningless, so it was easy to churn out, Gabby informs us that. And also I was an NPC because I did not have the Holy Spirit in me. And I was just like operating like in this world, like literally a robot, like work, pay attention to me, make money, like really, really needed Jesus. Behold our God. See Ma'am, if you are trying to do the Christian thing, and I assume she's sincere and not grifting, though, well, Brittany Dawn is coming to mind for some reason, maybe don't call people NPCs. Maybe don't insinuate that people who don't share your beliefs are robots. But this is why I believe Gabby hasn't changed. She thought she was better than everyone else before because she was YouTube famous. Now she thinks she is because she's found Jesus. And I do want to say it's entirely possible she is sincere. I don't like doubting people's beliefs, but... Come let us Oh, speaking of Behold Our God, I want to record a cover of that. Christian grifting is really lucrative and given the importance of forgiveness in Christianity, well, there's a reason folks like Brittany Dawn, Russell Brand, Donald Trump, the list goes on, have claimed it when it became convenient. There's also a built-in audience and Gabby needs an audience, not just because she's a YouTuber, but... And I also have to say thank you and I'm sorry to anybody who's literally ever ordered from Look Design because it has been slow ship times, poor packaging, bad customer service. Like, listen, I know, I know. And I'm so grateful to you. I'm so grateful to you. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. And when I come back with like the next like iteration, I'm, I promise I'm going to do better. Each time does get better. I know it's still bad, but it is getting better. And I'm trying to be more consistent. I'm trying to be more transparent. She has stuff to sell. And honestly, if she's running herself ragged trying to do videos, music, and a store, and she's aware of this, this whole video is her apologizing to the world and promising to do better, why not trim her list of to-dos? I fully support the Gabby Hanna retires into obscurity plan, but since she's decided that's not a real option, why not just focus on, for example, music and Patreon and leave regular videos and a store until she's got a better handle on things. Why the need to do everything at once? I don't get it, but if she wants to flail and keep making apology videos, 
that's her business. But I imagine this will be the only one. Like I look back at so many situations and I just feel embarrassed and I feel shame, but then I remember there is no condemnation or shame in Christ and that I've been wiped clean and Jesus forgives me and I can hope that you guys forgive me, but I, I can't force that. Maybe someone should tell her that Jesus isn't a get out of jail free card. Gabby ends the video by oh so graciously forgiving anyone who thinks they've wronged her and she has no beef with anyone. She loves everyone and closes with a prayer and I had some thoughts on it. She begins by talking about 9-11 and how it changed everything and I will say she does sound sincere. Life changed in that moment and things have gotten worse. What has gotten worse? God, we pray for the victims and the, the families of the victims that they've found peace. We pray that they've found love and rest. We pray for the heroes on that day and the days after. We, we applaud the volunteers. We applaud those who sacrificed their lives for the lives of others. We don't always understand tragedy. We know that there's evil in this world and we know that you love us enough to give us free will so that we aren't just mere worship robots here to serve you. You give us the choice to serve you. And we know that when people choose to not serve you, that horrible things happen. I'm sorry, is Gabby suggesting that horrible things happen because people aren't serving her chosen God? God, I don't understand what you're doing but I trust you fully. I trust that those lost who put their faith in you are in heaven with you now, Lord. I put my faith in you that I also will be in heaven with you. And death has lost its sting when I put my faith and love and trust in you. I pray that peace over everybody listening to this right now. I pray for peace in our country. I pray that you raise up strong leaders. I pray that you knock the arrogant leaders of our world today to their knees. I pray that you shake them hard with revelation and the fear of God. I pray that the people open their eyes and begin to vote for us and not for them. Who is us and who is them? I pray that we the people. I think Gabby is trying to be deliberately vague, but Given how often my mother uses we the people, I do think this is code for MAGA, which per my mother are the real people. And given that in this same video, Gabby said she was an NPC before Jesus, I think she's gotten herself involved in a very conservative, very political church. Can join together again, a nation divided cannot stand. It's no longer us against them, it's us against everyone. So then, is the us Christians and the them non-Christians? I pray, God, for the whole world to join in one body in Christ and turn to you. Even now, you said, you said, even now, you can turn to me and you promise to be a shield and a protector and a guide and a provider but we are one body. And if so much of the body is sick, the body doesn't function. We have to stand together as one body. Lord, I pray that for this nation, for this world, for our small towns, for our communities, for our schools, for our churches. I pray that we become one body, every part of the body important equally, cherished equally. Thank you, God, for humbling me. Thank you for calling me home when I went missing. Thank you for the discipline that I needed to be the woman I am today who's dedicated to serving you. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I was disgusted by Gabby's behavior years ago, and I was disgusted with this non-apology apology. And after hearing that prayer, I'm also alarmed. To me, it seemed threaded with unnecessary violence and why bring politics into it? But to be honest, in a weird way, it does make sense. But that's enough from me. Let me know in the comments. Do you think her Christianity is sincere? Do you think it will last? Will Gabby Hanna grow and change and become a genuinely good person? Or will she become just another professional Christian? Or Will she go the Tradcon route and become the new Lauren? I don't think Chen or Southern will be coming back from the tenant media scandal. 
And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.